G'day, how you doing? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel here where I like to teach beginners how to paint nice and wonderful eye popping and wow, I like that kind of paintings, all right, in acrylic. I'll get the size of my canvas up there for you. This is a different size than normal because it's a bit of off cut I had left over, it's 17 by 10 inches. And we will also have those colors going up the screen there for you as well. So I'm going to try and mix, make and use some Australian colours here because it's going to be like a farm, outback farm scene. You know, the paddock, the land, the trees, the, the sticks, the fences, the windmills, the tin water tanks, things like that. All right. And why I picked this, because it's sort of panoramic, panoramic layout. So it'll be good, uh, I feel for this all right so come on over here and we'll get right into this all right all right i've got my yellow putter on a brush and some craft paint this is just student paint poster paint craft paint flow paint whatever you want to call it is that cheap stuff in the big bottles in your art and craft store okay and my horizon line's a bit under halfway so i want to get the sky color so to get that to work on a nice canvas, I like to coat this over this sky area. There's no retarder in this. It's gonna be a nice outback sky if I can get it. So I'll just do the sky area for now. Right, I've just wiped me putter on a brush and I wanna grab some of the toning gray from a tube or you can mix a mid-tone gray like that. And I wanna mix it with me cerulean blue because I want like a evening, night time, get ready for dinner sort of sky time blue. Okay, so I'm adding that gray in there. I might as well push it all in there. And that white on the board will lighten it up as well. So I wanna, get this in I'm pushing it all over that white getting it everywhere I'm not mucking around this put her on a brush it puts it on and it don't muck around look at that eh? you can dance on a canvas all morning and your coffee will go cold while you're trying to paint it on with those little flat brushes just put her on a brush it don't muck around it puts it on look at that now I'm just going to iron it nice and straight like that and lo and behold, you want some atmosphere out there, do you? Let's put a bit of whiter value down the bottom. So I'll pick up some of this craft paint. Look at that, see? And come from the bottom. Push it on. I'll get a bit more. It's because I want to push it on. And now I want to iron it in and grad gradually blend it into that topper area there. Beautiful. A couple of creases in this canvas because it was at the end of the roll so that's where the roll was tighter and tighter on the canvas but once it's glued to a board it'll be flat all right i've got some titanium white out the tube and permanent linserin i want to get some of this and mix into this blue area here try and get a section of that it's too, there we go a bit different to the sky color that's up there okay all right, we're just gonna put a few clouds in the sky, just because I think the sky could use them. So I'll probably put some kind of, this is the underneath of the cloud, okay? Underneath bits there, pick up a bit more. And I don't know, I might put something there as well, underneath bits. Now I will grab another fan brush, just so as I don't have to wash that. Pick up some of this titanium white. This is another way to do some clouds. And I want to build me cloud now on top of that, like that dark color is going to be blended into it. I'll do one at a time so you can see. So I'm going to use my blending brush and I'll be wiping it at the same time. So I'll get the bottom of that. Just push like that. Okay, simple. I use the corner edge of that brush then. And now I want to blend this with turmoil and I'll try and get the base of this purpley color up there without it being such a straight line, but I might have to add some more. That's okay. Blend all that differently. There we go. 
I've got a nice tight bum on that. I'll add a bit more into that later when I add the yumminess. Same to this cloud. Let's put the white onto there. I nearly went to blend it and there was nothing on the darn thing. Something fluffy up there. Get the bum done and then blend the top. Blend it nicely, softly. Practice this blending procedure. It's such an easy thing to do once you know how to do it. Hey, it's unbelievable and mind boggling. Here we go. Now, like I said, I'll just get some of this dancing up in the cloud as well because I don't want that straight dark line under it the way it is. So I'm just distorting that. And I want to get the corner edge of that brush and blend that into that cloud. Same with this one. Beautiful. Then we can add the yumminess. The yumminess is going to give it that third dimension. I will get the bottom a little bit. Let's see what this does. Might look like a bit of rain coming down in the in the back paddock there. Eh? How's that? Boom. That'll do. Okay. Now we just want to crack and crisp up some of that cloud body this is the yumminess I call it now that yumminess you just want to tap down leaving the the luster of it there the brightness of it there but you're sinking the edges of it into the body of that cloud. And in hindsight, it pretty much gives the cloud a three-dimensional look, as you can see there. Hopefully it worked for me. You know, every time I do clouds, I panic. Are they going to work out all right? Because they're just such a challenge, but they're great to conquer at the same time. With some of this dark, I might put something across the top here sort of fingering in long bits like that but mainly in this corner here this is high dark stuff so if someone looking at your painting and says what's that dark stuff in the corner there you can go oh that's the high dark stuff simple you know if they ask what's that dark stuff there the high dark stuff in the paint and then I'll know oh that's your bloody clouds isn't it I know where you're coming from now now that paint is pretty dry there so I'm going to just distort that with the little bit of white if I can just to do, do something down the bottom here there we go that's it I forgot this had no retarder in it <laughs> Now I've dried this just so as I can map in the bottom half of the outback paddock land here. Now we don't have to have this in a straight line because paddocks, they can be sweeping and soft and flowing. So I've got my raw sienna and some craft white there. I even got yellow oxide. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. No, it's not. Just the raw sienna is fine. And we just want to map in the bottom area. This is like the undercoat, okay? Just so we, when we add our ground colours on there, this will add some depth to it maybe. And we can just sweep across there like that in a roundabout up and downy matter and up off the painting. Just like that. That's why I dried the sky because I didn't want to start pulling the sky colours around and frig digging around like that. Okay, so that's all we need for that. That can dry. We're not blending nothing on that. We're just going to add bits and pieces. Now I've got a few colours here. I've got permanent lindrin, I've got cobalt blue, I've got cadmium yellow light, and I've got raw sienna dark. I want to get this red and the blue mixed up to get the background colour of my trees. So we're going to mix that up and get a bit of a dark purpley colour going. And use what brush you feels good for your um, trees. Okay, 
I'll give that a bit of a spray just so things are going to stay together. Now I'm going to choose to use my hog bristle filbert and I'll just map in my trees on the over the horizon line there. I'll start from here and they're going to have gaps in them and, and everything so you, you'll get all this down to the ground there like so. Get some gaps up there like that. Cover your ground area up. Join this to the ground and build it up from the ground. So if you've got some sky there, there it is. And we can come quite high up here. So map them on the way you feel would look artistically arty. All right, I've pretty much done that. Now I'm grabbing, I'm loading the brush up, the flat hog bristle filbert, and I'm getting it on its side just so as I can control, see the bottom there, just like that. You know, some bits can come in front and back from others. It's, it's all different out there. And this is, because I was scraping it with the tip of the brush there, but not a good thing to do. So we use the brush on its edge just to stamp on a reasonably solid area there for the horizon section there, okay? Now I've given that a dry because what I want to do is mix up the colour to detail those trees, then we'll bring the next stuff forward. So I've got my cobalt blue. Use a green if you haven't got it, but I'm trying to mix colours today and I've got the raw sienna and I want to mix up a bit of a green here. So this is a very woody colour green. Let's put a bit of yellow in that and see what happens. We're getting a bit of a weird green there, but it's, it's a bit of a real looking green you get in Australian sceneries, I feel. Now let's put a bit of white with that. Okay, and I'm just trying to mix up that value of green like a gray green okay now i want to grab some of this and grab some of that red and put in there and grab some more blue whoops grab some more yellow i'm trying to make a darker color by adding the red That's a nice darker colour there of that one. Now obviously if you're not into mixing paints, this is just to teach beginners who want to get into mixing as well. Uh, just use two different values of green, a lighter and a darker value of green, okay? So the paint brush I used for the um, dark colour, I'm using that again, I've washed it out. Let's put a bit of water with this so it's going to transfer beautifully. And just gently colour in those trees up here, okay? So we want some of this come a little bit above it, but leaving that purpley colour you've put on, don't destroy all that, okay? How's that looking? Not bad, not bad. If anything, the tops are the green and the underside is the, um, the purpley colour, okay? And you're doing it in all these umbrella shapes, kind of leaning in towards the painting, bowing to the middle of the painting, because the middle of your painting is where the eye goes. So you want to bow your trees to the vision, if that makes sense to anyone. Beautiful. And these are kind of like, I'm hoping, that they're going to turn out quite normal looking colours. Not too loud and arty, crafty looking colours. They're going to look a bit more realistic, hopefully, okay? And like I did on other paintings, everything from this side will start bowing into the centre piece as well, alright? Right up here. Leaving darks in there. Coming from this side, I'm going to... Now I want to leave the, the bottom mass of this reasonably dark still. I don't want to bring this colour right to the very bottom of that because we want to 
put in a few trunks and then appropriately where we feel it can use some highlighting, we'll just simply highlight it. So be sure to watch my whole video uh, to get all the information I'm giving to you beginners there. And if you feel like you're gonna skip something, that's okay, but you're gonna miss out on some good information if you do that. So try not to skip through my videos if you can help it. Back down to that raw sienna and the white. If I can get some of it back. Okay, get some water on my brush. Now I'm just using a liner brush. Use a round brush. Something you can just um, hang on to and paint in some trunks. All right, I want to get some trunks up here. No, nothing too fat and bulky. We can... There we go, I'll get a bit more on my brush. That's the color I'm looking for, okay? And we can bring a lot of this down to the ground. Just about like that. Uh, get some in there. Because we are gonna put um, highlights of these trees there and it'll sink this stuff back. You can always grab some of the darker color and wear our skies open we can use the darker colors to kind of it's mixing with it a bit that's okay we can use the darker colors to join some of that okay if you feel things look like they're floating now moving right along there's probably just i know there's not too much out here very thin not all of them are seen okay Now this lighter colour we got, we want to use this and we've got some yellow there to highlight it. Just a little bit. So this will stick out on top of the um, darker green we just put there. Now you don't want to go and highlight everything there like that. You've got to kind of leave things in the background of stuff. So we can sink those trunks back over the darker colours there. Now we'll get some details on this side of the um, bushes as well. So I want to bring this in front of there. Bring that there. See, I'm leaving darks in between a lot. You don't want to go and destroy all that and make a multi-layered different colors of the patterns to try and get your trees because leaving the large amount of darks there and the, trying to find out where the lighter colors go once you master that you'll be doing some pretty bullshittingly good looking trees and detail here and there okay now you can see I've left darks here and there now we just got to highlight that subtly using I'll just wipe the brush and using pretty much what's on the brush, just a little bit of that into the cadmium yellow light. So if anything, you're, you're mixing up a yellow green, a real lot, real more yellowy yellow green and just something we can just dance across those trees there, just here and there. So I'll start over here. And I just want the slightest bits of stuff highlighted in between working out pushing things backwards and forwards from each other go to the top of the 
umbrella there and try and find your mushroom shapes or your umbrella shapes and highlight them. See how light I'm touching? Oh, that was a heavy touch. Very subtly. You don't want big, chunky blobs on there. Practice, practicing these brush movements is a task within itself. Not just knowing how to paint something, but how to use the tools within that painting, whether it's a knife or a brush or your mind. You've got to learn how to use it to suit your finish. Now, I want to push. See, I've left the top of that darker because it's further back. This one's coming right in front of that now. Doing your umbrella shapes. No lie, in every video I produce, even other YouTube artists, you can look at it and think, what's going on in that video? All right, let's use this as an example on painting these trees. Now just watch all the different behaviours that's happening in this video to create these trees. The blocking in, the colours you're going to use, the brush you want to use, how you want to do it, whether it's umbrella shapes like I'm doing here now, or you want some scratchy down looking shapes, whatever. You work out what you want to do, and then that's what you've got to practice. There we go, that's pretty much finished. Now what I want to do is probably put a mound in front of this bit here. That's why I've got it a bit forward there. So I'm going to grab some of this well, first I'll just wipe that brush willy-nilly, get all the bulk of the paint off it. And then I'll grab some of this on one side, grab a lot of paint, and I'll grab some of this on the other side, grab a lot of paint. Alright? And I want to dance on, let's see if I can get this. I want the, the lighter colour at the top. So I'll probably come about off the painting here. And I'm going to come in front of the bottom of that trees there and bring this in a bit on a downward motion and I'm putting the shadow in there at the same time then I can highlight this Now I'm going to pick up some more of the um, lighter colour, just so as I can, because I'm trying to do it wet on wet, but we'll see how it's going to go. We can, if you're a beginner, which I should be teaching, I'm getting caught up in advanced stuff here, so what I'll do, I'll change it up a bit, just so you don't think, oh, I can't do what he's doing there. You can do it, you watch. I'll change it up a bit. Simply wash your brush, pick up this dark colour only, okay? And then we'll, we'll come along, along here, along here, along here. And we're going to start just dancing on along here. We're going to start dancing on this mound that I'm trying to build. So we're going to use the dark colour to dance it all on. Forget what I've done there, that can stay there though, but you do it this way then. What I'm going to do here is I can scratch it out a bit and I'm sort of putting little fingers out as well just to give it some kind of, I don't know, artistic aesthetics. I'll leave that dark bit there, I like it, what I started off with. Just break it up like that. All right, now we're grabbing the, the brighter green with the highlight in it. And I want to kind of create my mound now. So I was doing it that way before, but I didn't want to confuse you. This is a different green. It's coming up, sinking that row of trees back. And this is all the green in the foreground here, okay? Now you've got to keep splaying your brush so it, breaks up like this and I want it broken up like that and I want it sitting on top of these darks like that. This is just stamping on now. I'm bringing it down so I'm making darker and lighter values to show within the brush strokes that this 
grass is coming sort of from downhill from that area there where those row of trees are. If you've ever done a tree, a branch, a shrub, a boat in the water, anything, if it's got that floating aspect about it, it's simply because you haven't put the darks there. Or if you've got a tree that looks too light green and see-through, you just haven't got the darks there. Now I'm just going to concentrate just for the light. I've done a bit there. I want to try and just concentrate some brighter values stipulating bolder parts of this land out here okay nice bright bit there radiating down in a zigzag motion to create a ridge coming towards us okay we got this piece of land here as well so let's not forget about that get right on the top of it leave darks and if anything leave it at the bottom and you can use a fan brush for this. I'm just using this filbert out here. Look at that. Now, just to finesse the edge here, I'm just picking up the dark and I'm just where it's light, I'm caressing it with some of this darker colour. Just hopefully to sit it down. Here we go. Now this colour here we got on there for the ground, I'm grabbing some burn umber with some of that just to get some darker real, eye, real type of structures in there. So you could have a, I don't know, a, maybe a band of this just coming long ways, scratch it in there. All sorts. Now I'm just going to grab some white and smear into that and go on top of it with a different, there, yeah, look at that, yeah. Learn how to shape land with brush strokes. It's something you can learn on its own. See, learning how to paint isn't just painting a painting and hopefully you can paint that painting. It's learning and practicing what needs to go into that type of painting, whether it's how to shape the land or how to shadow things. I mean, I ain't the best artist, but I, I know more about art than how I can paint art. Put it that way, I feel. And there's probably a few artists that feel the same. So I've got some yellow oxide and some white now this colour I'm putting on there is pretty much white. I just need some of that in there. Out and about back in the country farmlands and country towns and that, land like this is always like broken trees, just the odd lamppost or a trunk. So I'm going to put something about here. I'll come down to about there and from about here. So I want to just create nice and white, bring it a bit wider as I come to the ground, about there. Okay, so I'll, I'll paint that in, getting it nice and white. Get the edge nice and roll the brush as you go. Get the edge nice. Then we'll just add some darker values in it, which is this burn umber, not too dark. Just grab some of that. I'll grab a, I'll grab a, one of these sort of brushes, and I'll get some of this darkened just so we can darken the side and the bottom. So let me lean on here. We'll get this side done first. So start from the very top and let it gradually fade into that side of the trunk. Subtle. Just like that. And see the top? just to make it look like <laughs> you want it looking. We 
we can add more light back to there to fix that up but I want it looking like it's all broken out up there and from about here I want this nice and dark and blending into the bottom there that brush is not quite as going to do what I need it to do so I'm going to use a small flat so I can scrumble it as I go because yeah and I want that distinctively dark so I'm using just the burn number just to grab get there come around oh yeah because I want that to look round and start scrumbling that up there we go there we go there we go come on get your brush chiseled in let it break up nice and dark there just grabbing the light colour again and fixing up where you feel that dark bit needs to be sunken back. Okay. I want a nice dark bit. Watch this. Right in there. Oh, it's too wet. <laughs> I just got a tissue and wipe that off. Because see here, you watch what this dark does against the light right in there. There's a nice dark pocket. Bring it up. Let that light show. Nice dark pocket there. And hopefully that's looking like the inside of the tree. Yes, it is. That's okay. Kiss it on the ground. I can put stuff in front of that. <laughs> So I'll put something in front of that, probably about here, just to hide. So I've got that the dark colour I use for these trees here, and I'm probably just going to make some kind of bush on the ground and give it some kind of shadowing elements out there as well. I've gone and ruined the whole bottom of that trunk now which I didn't want to do but let's get something come on right out here that's it don't make it look like a stupid little add-on and bring it forward I don't like things all flat against the background I like them to come forward if we can and you can learn to do that in your art as well you know if anything this row of trees isn't in a straight line like a lot of naughty boys lined up against the wall. They're all relaxed, ready to play ball in the playground. You'll have to excuse that. The camera was off when I thought it was on. So I'm just adding this little dead branch sticking out of the bush here, just with a small liner brush. And I'm going to grab some lighter colour to highlight it as well, just to stick some kind of subject value in that little bush there all right i'm just putting some old fence posts out here you know and some can be old this like this one here actually can be an old disused tele telecommunications pole or something probably put a nice line of something right in here just to take your eye in there bit of something I don't know what that is bit of something in there I'll tone that down a bit don't worry bit darker add more of that purpley grey to that mix and just come somewhere about here about there one there one here maybe one here just sinking this atrocious tree that I had trouble with just sinking that back so I want the top reasonably posty looking I hope this post doesn't offend anybody because it's right in front of that big post and that big post is probably offended by that small post getting all the limelight. 
Okay, now I've got some yellow oxide and white. Now I've got three knives, a long, medium and a short one. Mix your yellow ochre with some white. It doesn't have to be fully mixed. Okay, and we're just gonna, you can paint it on or you can knife it on. I'm just gonna knife on me, um, just like that marbly. I wanna knife on just a simple windmill structure. So we've got a nice roll of paint there. Uh, just to make things safe, and I don't go beyond my point, I'll put a bit of tape <laughs> at the bottom. Where do I want it? About here. Probably about up there somewhere. Just so I don't go beyond at that point, just there. Now pick up your paint, and we'll get our windmill knifed in. So just boom. Windmills are rackety, rickety, rackety, and you know, all sorts of things like that. Anyone that's, you know, I'm pretty sure you have them in the States as well. And we want the next one about here coming in, rickety, rackety. Good. Now we'll get him a bit, I'm gonna grab the smaller, smaller knife, I mean smaller knife's uneven, so it's gonna make things a bit difficult for me, but we wanna give this a go. Oh, a lovely structure there. Now this is all quite busy here. This knife's buggered, look at it. it, it's not flat there. I don't know what the hell happened to it. When I bought it, I didn't obviously look. I'll use this one. There we go. I'll try and use that one to get some of the um, crosses up across so actually they do have a bit of a landing up there where you can stand on them and service them now I'm grabbing some of the burn umber now and mixing with that just to get a darker oh value of that so you just oh oh there we go darker value get it on your knife pull it and we'll get some background ones if we can just slightly darker oh my signs in the way there when I move the tape I will bring these ones to the appropriate height whether it's the ones in front what I got to do yeah the ones in front I got to bring to the appropriate height so this is making it a real rustic looking windmill there structure and grab some of this dark okay and darken up bits here if you can putting bits of shadow in everything there we go because <laughs> whether you know it or not I'm going to get the darker color and come all the way down here because windmills have a like a tail shaft or a rod that goes down in the ground does, which does all the pumping I'll just peel this off that's all right I'm going to put some grass in front of that I want to get a flat just to put the um, windmill pieces on so I want the the burnt umber I want the darker color first and then I'll highlight it and I'll try and make some windmill blades top here. So let's, where is our windmill about there? So we're gonna go. Try and make a circle, but an obscured circle because I want this circle distorted because we're not looking at it front on. And my goodness, I hope this works. Oh no, I didn't think I covered me um, cloud up there. That's all right, we'll just get it busy with the darkness here for now. From there, it looks like it's not at the moment, but don't worry, once we highlight this, it'll look, it'll look all right, eh? It'll look all right. Now windmills, a bit like a palm tree, isn't it? Keep saying, don't make your palm trees look like a windmill. Um, 
windmills do have a line going around them so I'm picking up the darker colour here again on a liner and we'll kind of just draw this around here like so just so it's there and they have a lot of I can use this to get some busy stuff going in here as well and they have a tail on them like I'll draw it on here pretty much something out here with a wind flap on it and that helps turn it like a helicopter tail you know so I'll put something appropriately bushwhackery out there like that look at the fun I had in that piece hey eh? whoa goodness pretty much grab that color that we mixed up and make it really bright just so we can highlight the blades some of the blades now I've dried that helicopter not the helicopter the windmill and work out here uh, we'll start this way so as we can I go there and across the top like that now I want this dark bright bit to come in front of that dark bit just like that just like that just like that something like that is that looking okay whoo uh, this is in front of them so don't put that in the front there we go and we'll get some kind of yeah. and grabbing that same marble color I can like I said I'll bring this down just a little bit there and here just to keep it in perspective because we're going to put some grass in front of that so with all this I'll grab another flat brush first just so as I can put the shadow there I want to get a bit of shadow underneath that windmill just with the burnt umber so I pretty much got this all there like that oh, I had to touch the bright bit didn't I and I pretty much want to just come up onto that dark stuff you can use a fan brush for this whatever you want and where I've got all these dark areas we can add extra grass as well just scratch it up very dry but scratchy because they have all that old dead wheat looking grass out in the outback farm areas there and stuff we got all sorts of it coming along here I just added some more dark there so I can get some more lights over it a lot of like grass Now before you think I might have forgotten, these posts need some shadow to them as well. Without it they just look floating. So I'm pretty much going across the top and down. I don't know, I'm just picking a side. Because I don't want these to clash with the tree trunks, they've got to be different. And then we can go a little bit brighter just to highlight them. So I'm grabbing the white and the cream, the yellow ochre. And if anything, let's try and see what a the light hitting the tops of them look like. Because sometimes that's all you need to do to a post. Okay, I just put a little bit of wire in the fence. You can still muck around, put some birds in the sky detail it more and more and more we'll just whack this frame around it and see how she's going to look there you go it's not too shabby is it we've got an outback australian scene with a windmill the sky and a, a gone tree a dead tree you can do that all right i hope you had fun and you learned something from this video and if you did make sure you tell your friends but if you don't like what i'm doing here you tell everybody all right goodbye good luck and good on you